Hello there, my name is Hocus Pocus and welcome to a building tutorial today guys. So this is going to be a small piece of a uh, bit of inspiration hopefully for you guys and I call this the layering method. So without further ado, I guess we should just jump right in. It's best to have a visual display of what's going on. So first of all, when I'm going to build a wall in my world, I begin with just a flat bank of blocks and I'll go ahead and get one of those constructed. And here's a separate little piece of information that I'd give you guys just to help with your build. So um, I'll probably make a separate video on this at some point, but when you're building walls, I would suggest that first of all, you begin with a single texture and then you should intertwine textures that are similar to it. So in this case, we're using a bit of andesite. We're going to use all of the blocks in my toolbar there to just give it a bit of extra texture. And this works well just to break things up and also give a little bit of detail. So I'll go ahead and wrap this wall up and then we can continue. Okay, so that looks fine to me. And now we can move on to step two. Okay guys, so I've cloned the first wall and moved it over here just so that we can have a step-by-step -step progression once it's complete. And what you want to do now for the second step of the layering process is to add a divider block that uh, contrasts very well with the wall that you've built. So we've got a gray wall. We're going to be using a dark oak wood to divide the wall. So we'll find the center and we'll go ahead and place a column of logs and I would suggest again just bring it forward push it back something like that add a bit of depth to your build it always helps so we'll have another one on the end here and then we'll have a third and final one right here and there you go we've got some dividers that run across the wall and they are pushed out forward one block just to give it that extra depth and now we can move on to step three and then for step three we're going to add a bit of smooth stone in so I'm going to just put a trim along the bottom like so and what you should notice using this technique is that every time you have you add something to the wall, you're adding an extra layer. That's why I'm calling it the layering method. That isn't the official name, by the way, just something I came up with before this video. So we'll go ahead and add a trim over the top as well. And we'll be finished up with something like that. And you could stop here. You could even stop at step two. You could stop at step one. You stop wherever you like, whenever you're content with what you've built, but we can continue. So let's take a look at the next step. Okay, so we're getting to the tail end of the process here for this wall. It's not really big enough to add too much more detail, but there are a few more things you can do. So I'll give you a couple of examples here. First one you could do is apply some stairs in the corners like this, and then maybe even think about slabbing on the top as well, just so you've got these sort of connectors in the corners where the columns are. And you could do something similar with dark oak fences. So pop a fence in and again, slab the top of it, just something like that. It's just an extra feature, an extra bit of depth, always looks pretty good. And again, you could even combine the stairs with this in the center, do something like that and just have a combination of both. And then again, on this side, I'll go ahead and pop some more stairs in, slab the top. And as I say, just keep building the wall out. Again, you could even do something like this at the bottom if you wanted to, you could have a few stairs in at the bottom just to add again some more depth and to give some symmetry between the top and the bottom, something like that. And then again, maybe you want to have, I don't know, we could go with some smooth stone, a fence post, and you could cap that as well if you wanted to, but just keep adding a little bit more depth, a little bit more detail, and I'm sure you'll figure it out if you just play around. So there's one more step that I like to do, and we'll go into that right now. And then once I'm content with the wall, which I am at this point, something that I personally like to do, which is totally optional, is to add some lighting to the wall. So firstly, we could go with some lanterns. I've got a few different options here, and you just wanna hang those wherever you possibly can. Something like that might work out, or you could even place them on the floor. Totally up to you, as I say, but we're not gonna go with that style, I don't think. Again, sea lanterns are an option. You can just pop one right in the center like so. Similarly with redstone lamps, you'll just wanna put it right in the middle and ensure that you've got some power running to it in terms of redstone signal. And then finally, as an extra little touch, you could just pop some trapdoors surrounding these light sources and it always looks pretty good. Again, you can use oak if you want to, just so that you can see through to those textures and it just gives you a nice completed look. All right then guys, so before we wrap up here, I've got a second example that I just brewed up for you guys. So this one begins with a brick wall, bit of granite and polished granite in it. Then we add in the diorite as the column to divide the wall and also provide that contrast. 
And then in this next one, we change things up slightly. You can see that we've actually gone for a diagonal corner on the wall just to make it almost a little bit arched. So we've got the spruce uh, trim and the same at the bottom, we've got some spruce planks as part of the trim. So we're using uh, slabs at the top, by the way, there just to connect everything up. And then on to the next step. I left the diorite in here differently uh, because I just wanted to show you that sometimes you have to adapt. You have to adapt your design as you're working. So I changed over from the regular diorite because it got hidden by the stairs here, moved on to the polish just because I like that a little bit more. And you can see that we've added a few stairs in here just to add more curvature to the uh, to the trim. We've added stairs in at the top and I've replaced a few of the slabs with stairs here just to make that angle appear a little bit more. And then at the bottom again, we've gone with some more stairs again, just surrounding the columns. I think it looks quite cool. And then finally, the last step is to add a little bit of lighting. And this time I've gone with another example of something you could do. You could just hide some lamps behind some glass that is a similar color to your wall, or you could even contrast the glass if you wanted to. You could pop a white piece of glass in here. I might even give you guys a demonstration of that. So using some white stained glass, which of course matches the diorite, you could have something like this, which again, looks rather cool just because it contrasts the wall very well and fits the theme of the trim that you have going around the outside. Okay then guys, that is going to be the end of this tutorial video. I do hope that it provided you a little bit of inspiration to help build in your world and gave you a few ideas as to what you can do just to improve the quality of some of your builds here. And uh, you can apply this technique to a few different builds in, in your world, not just walls. You can use this in multiple areas. Just as I say, it's the layering technique. That's what I call it. Just keep adding layers, add some depth, add a few design features here and there, such as the trapdoors in the glass. And by the end of it, you'll have something that is very, very good looking. So once again, thank you, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.